I'm guessing that many of you have a suspension fork on your mountain bike and probably most of you ride a full suspension. Here I'm going to give you an insight into different forks for different mountain bike disciplines and also their features. So all forks are made up of the same basic components. We have the steerer, the crown, the stanchions, the lowers, the axle, and then you have your cable guide here, and on the reverse, you have your caliper or brake mount. So steerers, they come in two different materials, alloy, which we have here, and then also carbon. And then onto the sizing where it gets a little bit complicated, we have the old fashioned style, which is one inch and one eighth, and that'll be straight through. And then we have what we have here, which is one inch and one eighth, to 1.5, which is called tapered and the most fashionable size right now. And then also there is oversize, which is 1.5 from top to bottom, which is a little bit less um, popular, but you do still find it around. One thing that is critical when you are purchasing a new fork is that you make sure that you match your steerer setup to not only your headset, but also your frame. They genuinely come in two different uh, types. Here we have a conventional single crown fork, as you can see, single. And then the other form is a dual crown fork. So you've got crown at the top, the longer stanchions that comes right up to the top of your head tube. Um, the reason for this is the added stiffness of the, sh like the chassis from top to bottom, two crowns providing extra strength and really stiff steering. The compromise with this is obviously the added weight of the fork. They tend to be um, substantially heavier than the single crown ones that you've seen earlier. This is the more conventional setup, is a 15mm axle and it opens and closes just like your quick release does. Threaded into the fork here, it's much stiffer than um, the quick release used to be. Okay, so on the more gravity orientated forks, they tend to have a slightly bigger axle um, at 20 mils. Obviously, this is just for added strength. Um, they also, the fixing there is has pinch bolts, which you don't get on the trail um, fork. And then also it is fixed with an Allen key here. Basically just means that it's really stiff and you can put a lot of force through the front wheel when riding down it. So let's talk about wheel size. With 26 inch being the original mountain bike wheel size, obviously things have changed quite dramatically the last couple of years with the introduction of 27.5, which has probably become the staple wheel size with all disciplines across the board using that. Then we move on to 29. I think it's really aimed at more the XC kind of market, but it's definitely a cool feeling when you get out and ride on the big wheels. If you are thinking of changing forks, you will definitely need to match your fork to your wheel size. They do not cross over. It will be a specific fork for your specific wheel size. So moving on from that, we're gonna talk about travel. This is usually measured in millimeters and it basically means the amount of movement that you have in your stanchions, as you can see here, the little travel indicator there. What you will find is from the shorter travel forks, moving up to the bigger, more gravity uh, fed forks that the stanchions tend to get slightly wider. This is for an improved stiffness through the fork and basically you will take more abuse when you're riding tougher and tougher terrain. Here the guys mostly opt to race on hardtails. They uh, use about 80 to 100 mil and they opt for the lightest fork possible. Here we have Fox's offering. It weighs 1.5 kilograms has 32 mil stanchions and a 15 mil through axle, mostly just for added stiffness. Okay, so here we have an enduro fork. With this, it's a little bit of a balancing act because basically they want a, a fork that's stiff enough to take the punishment on the descent, but then not to hinder the characteristics of the bike too much for when you're climbing or riding single track. Riders are looking for anything between sort of 140 mil to 170 mil of travel. So and finally we have the downhill fork. As you can see it's a dual crown um, 
here, the stanchion's going all the way to the top of the frame. We have a 20 mil axle as opposed to the 15 on the trail bike. And what you want to be looking for from your downhill fork is a super supple feel, but it's still able to eat those nasty stutter bumps and take up big hits with relative ease. I used to always look for my fork to ramp up really heavily through its stroke. This would avoid those harsh bottom outs and that nasty feeling in your hand. What is worth mentioning is they are quite heavy. They're weighing about 2.7 kilograms and also they have around 200 mils of travel. Okay, so that wraps up suspension forks explained. For a little bit more in depth look at setup, check out Neil's video up here. And also good habit to get into is doing those pre-ride checks. Check out our video down here. And it goes without saying, subscribe to us at GMBN. A fork. They're all made up of the same components in it.